Hello and welcome to Rail Tales. I'm Dr. Linda Bond and I'm at the Railway Museum in San Angelo. And I want to invite you to come on Saturdays and have your picture made. You can poke your head right in and it looks like you're riding an engine or hopping on the rails. Today we're going to talk about Thomas the Tank Engine again. And you know, at first Thomas was so cheeky and I, I really felt like he thought he was better than anybody. But I kind of feel like he's getting better and better. He's becoming more kind, more considerate of other people. He'll never be big like Gordon or as fast as some of the other trains. But he has his own little line and I think you'll enjoy this story. This is called Thomas and the Guard. Now, I want to remind you that on all of these railway lines, there are many people who work, and the guard is one person who's on every single train, and he's very helpful. You'll see what happens in just a minute. Thomas the Tank Engine is very proud of his branch line. He thinks it's the most important part of the whole railway. He has two coaches. They're old and they need paint, but he loves them very much. He calls them Annie and Clarabelle. Annie can only take passengers, but Clarabelle can take passengers, luggage, and the guard. As they run backwards and forward along the line, Thomas sings them little songs, and Annie and Clarabelle sing too. When Thomas starts from a station, he sings, Oh, come along, we're rather late. Oh, come along, we're rather late. And the coaches sing, We're coming along, we're coming along. They don't mind what Thomas says to them because they know he's trying to please the fat controller. And they know too that if Thomas is cross, he's not cross at them. He's cross with the engines on the main line who have made him late. One day they had to wait for Henry's train. It was late. Thomas was getting crosser and crosser. How can I run my line properly if Henry's always late? He doesn't realize that the fat controller depends on me. And he whistled impatiently. At last, Henry came. Where have you been, lazy bones, said Thomas crossly. Oh dear, my system's out of order. No one understands my case. You don't know what I suffer, moaned Henry. Rubbish, said Thomas. You're too fat. You need exercise. Lots of people with piles of luggage got out of Henry's train and they all climbed into Annie and Clarabelle. Thomas had to wait until they were ready. At last the guard blew his whistle and Thomas started at once. The guard turned round to jump into his van, tripped over an old lady's umbrella and fell flat on his face. By the time he picked himself up, Thomas and Annie and Clarabelle were steaming out of the station. Come along, come along, said Thomas, but Clarabelle didn't want to come. I've lost my nice guard. I've lost my nice guard, she sobbed. Annie tried to tell Thomas, we haven't a guard, we haven't a guard, but he was hurrying and he didn't listen. Oh, come along, oh, come along, he puffed impatiently. Annie and Clarabelle tried to put on their brakes, but they couldn't without the guard. Where is our guard? Where is our guard? They cried. Thomas didn't stop till they came to a signal. Bother that signal, said Thomas. What's the matter? I don't know, said his driver. The guard will tell us in a minute. They waited and waited, but the guard didn't come. Beep, 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 where is the guard, whistled Thomas. We've left him behind, sobbed Annie and Clarabelle. The driver, the fireman, and the passengers looked, and there was the guard running along as fast as he could outside the line with his flags in one hand and his whistle in the other. Everybody cheered him. He was very hot, so he sat down and had a drink and told them all about it. I'm very sorry, Mr. Guard, said Thomas. It wasn't your fault, Thomas. It was the old lady's umbrella. Look, the signal's down. Let's make up for lost time. Annie and Clarabelle were so pleased to have their guard again, and they sang, as fast as you like, as fast as you like, to Thomas all the way, and they reached the end of the line quicker than ever. Thank you for joining me with Rail Tales and listening to Thomas and how he's becoming a very useful engine. We'll see you next time. Hello, I'm Dr. Linda Bond and I'm at the Railway Museum in San Angelo and this is Rail Tales. I want to remind you that on Saturdays the museum is now open, so come on down and see what goes on. I've been thinking about you and I wondered,
If your mother or father wrote a story about you, would you be like Thomas, the cheeky little engine? Or would you be more like big, strong Gordon? Was there something that you wish very much? Well, in this story, we're gonna find out what Thomas really wishes. It's called, Thomas Goes Fishing. Thomas's branch line had a station by the river. As he rumbled over the bridge, he could see people fishing. Sometimes they stood quietly by their lines. Sometimes they were actually jerking fish out of the water. Thomas often wanted to stay and watch, but his driver said, no, what would the fat controller say if we were late? Thomas thought it would be lovely to stop by the river. I should like to go fishing, he told himself longingly. Every time he met another engine, he would say, I want to fish. They would all answer, engines don't go fishing. Silly stick in the muds, Thomas said. Thomas generally had to take in water at the station by the river. One day he stopped as usual, and his fireman put the pipe from the water tower in his tank. Then he turned the tap, but it was out of order and no water came out. Bother, said Thomas, I am thirsty. Never mind, said his driver, we'll get some water from the river. They found a bucket and some rope and went to the bridge. Then the driver let the bucket down into the water. The bucket was old and had five holes, so they had to fill it up, pull it up and empty it into Thomas's tank as quickly as they could. There's a hole in my bucket, dear Liza, dear Liza, sang the fireman. Never mind about Liza, said the driver. You empty that bucket before you spill the water on me. They finished at last. That's good, that's good puffed Thomas as he started. They puffed along the valley and were in the tunnel when Thomas began to feel a pain in his boiler while steam hissed from his safety valve in an alarming way. There's too much steam, said his diver, and his fireman opened the tap on the feed pipe to let more water into the boiler, but none came. Oh dear, burst, said Thomas, I'm going to burst, I'm going to burst. They damped down his fire and struggled on. I've got such a pain, I've got such a pain, Thomas hissed. Just outside the last station, they stopped. And Thomas, who was hissing fit to burst, went over to the siding right out of the way. Then while the guard telephoned for an inspector and the fireman was putting out the fire, the driver wrote notices in big letters, which he hung on Thomas's in front and behind that said, Danger, keep away. Soon the inspector and the fat controller arrived. Cheer up, Thomas. We'll soon put you right. The driver told them what had happened. So the feed pipe is blocked, said the inspector. I'll just look in the tanks. He climbed up and peered in, and then he came down. Uh, excuse me, sir, he said to the fat controller. Please look in the tank and tell me what you see. Certainly, inspector. He clambered up, looked in, and nearly fell in surprise. Inspector, can you see fish? Good gracious me, how did the fish get in there, driver? Thomas's driver scratched his head. We must have fished them from the river, and he told them about the bucker, bucket. The fat controller laughed. Well, Thomas, so you and your driver have been fishing, but fish don't suit you, and we must get them out. So the driver and the fireman fetched rods and nets, and they all turned, took turns fishing in Thomas's tank while the fat controller told them what to do. When they had caught all the fish, the station master gave them some potatoes. The driver borrowed a frying pan while the fireman made a fire beside the line and did the cooking. Then they had a lovely picnic supper of fish and chips. That was good, said the fat controller as he finished his share but fish don't suit you, Thomas, so you mustn't do it again. No, sir, I won't, said Thomas sadly. Engines don't go fishing. It's too uncomfortable. Thank you for joining me for Rail Tales. We'll read another story about Thomas later. Hello, I'm Dr. Linda Bond, and I'm at the Railway Museum in San Angelo, and this is Rail Tales. We've been talking about Thomas the Tank Engine, and you know, sometimes Thomas was just very silly. Sometimes he thought he could do things better than anybody else, and he wasn't very polite about it. And that's the way in this story called Thomas, Terence, and the Snow. 
Autumn was changing the leaves from green to brown. The fields were changing too, from yellow stubble to brown earth. As Thomas puffed along, he heard the chug, chug, chug of a tractor at work. One day, stopping for a signal, he saw the tractor close by. Hello, said the tractor. I'm Terence. I'm plowing. I'm Thomas. I'm pulling a train. What ugly wheels you've got. They're not ugly. They're caterpillars, said Terence. I can go anywhere. I don't need rails. I don't want to go anywhere, said Thomas huffily. I like my rails, thank you. Thomas often saw Terence working, but though he whistled, Terence never answered. Winter came, and with it, dark, heavy clouds full of snow. I don't like it, said Thomas's driver. A heavy fall is coming. I hope it doesn't stop us. Pooh, said Thomas, feeling the snow melt on the rails. Soft stuff, nothing to it. And he puffed on, feeling cold but confident. They finished their journey safely, but the country was covered, and the rails were two dark lines standing out in the white snow. You'll need your snow plow for the next journey, Thomas, said his driver. Pooh, snow is silly soft stuff. It won't stop me. Listen to me, the driver replied. We're going to fix your snow plow on, and I want no nonsense, please. The snow plow was heavy and uncomfortable, and it made Thomas cross. He shook it, he banged it, and when they got back, it was so damaged, the driver had to take it off. You're a very naughty engine, said his driver, as he shut the shed door that night. Next morning, both driver and fireman came early and worked hard to mend the snowplow, but they couldn't make it fit properly. It was time for the first train. Thomas was pleased. I shan't have to wear it. I shan't have to wear it. I hope it's all right. I hope it's all right, whispered the other trains. The driver was anxious, too. It's not bad here, but it's sure to be deep in the valley. It was snowing again when Thomas started, but the rails were not covered. Silly soft stuff, silly soft stuff, he puffed. I don't need that stupid old thing yesterday. I don't need it today. Snow can't stop me. And he went on thinking how clever he was. At the other end, he saw a heap of snow fallen from the sides of the cutting. Silly old snow, said Thomas, and charged it. Cinder and ashes, said Thomas. I'm stuck. And he was. Back, Thomas, back, cried his driver. Thomas tried, but his wheels spun and he couldn't move. More snow fell and piled up round him. The guard went back for help while the driver, fireman, and passengers tried to dig the snow away. But as fast as they dug, more snow slipped down until Thomas was nearly buried. Oh, my wheels and coupling rods, said Thomas sadly. I shall have to stop here till I'm frozen. What a silly engine I am. And he began to cry. At last, a tooting in the distance told them a bus had come for the passengers. Then Terence chugged through the tunnel. He pulled the empty coaches away and came back for Thomas. Thomas' wheels were clear, but still spun helplessly when he tried to move. Thomas tugged and slipped and slipped and tugged and at last dragged Thomas into the tunnel. Thank you, Terence. Your caterpillars are splendid, said Thomas gratefully. I hope you'll be sensible now, Thomas, said his driver severely. I'll try, said Thomas, and puffed on home. Thank you for joining me for Rail Tales. We'll see you next time.